In this video, I will show you how to build an API using the Slim PHP framework. But what's the reason to use Slim when there are other choices like Laravel? And the answer is that Slim is a lightweight framework that makes it easy to implement routing and other such things. It also follows the PHP standards recommendations, which helps you better organize the application than when you use vanilla PHP. So what we are gonna build today is a Cricket Players API. Let's see how it will look in the end. The API allows fetching a list of players. You can also get individual players by the player ID. You can also send post requests to add new players and the data should be sent in JSON format. The responses from the API will also be in JSON format. The API also supports editing and deleting existing players. We will also implement authentication so as to prevent anonymous users from modifying the data. We will also perform some data validation to make sure the input data is in the expected format. So basically, you can see that it's a CRUD application. Also, by the end of this video, you will learn a lot of concepts such as how to use Composer to install PHP packages, sending and receiving HTTP messages using Slim in JSON format, the concept of middlewares, interacting with a MySQL database, using the Doctrine Query Builder to create parameterized queries and prepared statements, how to use dependency injection, how to validate the incoming data, authentication, and so on. So with that, let's begin. In order to install Slim PHP, first we need to set up Composer on our system. So let me go to Google and search for Install Composer. Then go to the site getcomposer.org. In the download Composer page, you can see a couple of commands to quickly install Composer. What it does is it downloads the Composer setup file into the current directory, then run the installer and after that it removes the installer file. I am gonna copy the commands into the clipboard, then open the terminal on the desktop and paste it and run it. Currently the script is downloading the composer setup.php file and then executes it. Now if I list the directory using the ls command, you can see a file called composer.phar. It's a PHP archive file. Next, in order to run Composer as a normal command, we can move that file into the bin directory. So here I am creating a new directory inside usr local mkdir dash p usr local bin. Okay. ls usr slash local and you can see the newly created bin directory. Next, let's move the composer.phar file into the bin directory and rename it as just composer ls usr local bin and here is the file composer. Now we can start using composer based commands. We can check the version using the command composer dash dash version and you can see that the version 2.4.3 is successfully installed. Now we are ready to install slim php using composer. Let me open the vs code editor and then open the built in terminal. I am gonna create a new project directory called slim php which will contain all our project files. Then inside that directory, let me create another directory called app, which contains all our slim PHP files. Now I can install it inside the app directory. Before that, let's take a look at the slim PHP documentation. We are going to install version 4 and here is the composer command to do that. Once again, let me check if composer is installed composer dash dash version okay now let's run the command composer require slim slash slim followed by the version number the installation is successful and on the left side you can see the files composer.json composer.log as well as the vendor directory which contains all the dependencies now we can start writing our application I am creating another directory called public. Inside that I am adding the index.php file. This file is going to be the entry point to our whole application. 
Before proceeding, we want to do one more thing. We want to add a PSR implementation. In case you are not aware, PSR stands for PHP Standards Recommendation. These standards are set by the PHP Framework Interop Group. And PSR 7 is one of the set of standards which offers interfaces on how to use HTTP communication. Or in other words, it gives class interfaces to deal with HTTP requests and responses. So run the command composer require slim slash PSR 7. Ok PSR is also successfully installed. By the way, all these packages we install using Composer goes inside the vendor directory. For instance, here is the PSR package and here is the Slim package. Now we can start writing the actual code. All the interfaces are neatly organized using namespaces. So the first thing we want to do is to import the interfaces along with their namespaces. The first one is the server request interface and the second one is the response interface. Also note that we are using alias names for both server request interface as request and response interface as response. Another interface we want to use in our code is the app factory interface which is a part of the slim framework. Next we want to import all the composer dependencies. For that we can require the autoload.php file inside the vendor directory. Now we are ready to create our application instance variable app equals app factory create. You can see that the create method is a static method. Then call the run method app run. Between these two lines we want to add the routes. You can think of a route as a page or an endpoint in our application. So let's start by adding the home route variable app then call the get method. The get method denotes that we are defining an endpoint that receives a get request. Inside parenthesis, the first argument is the path. Since it's the home route, enter a slash. The second argument is the callback function which gets executed when the route matches. This function has two parameters, the request and response instances. Let's see how we can output a simple welcome message. Since it's an API, we want to output it in JSON format. So let me put the message inside an array. Response array equals message welcome to our cricket players API. Then we need to encode the array into a string using JSON encode. Then we want to write that into the response object using the get body and write methods. You can see how I changed the two methods. Finally return the response object. That's our first route but we are not yet ready to run our application because we haven't set up the server. You can use any server stack you like such as XAMPP or WAMP. But in this case, I'm gonna use Docker. I know that some of you don't know what Docker is or how to use it. So I have a separate video on how to set up a PHP development environment using Docker. I suggest you to watch that video as well. In fact, the process is quite simple. I already have the Docker container engine running on my machine. Next, I want to create new containers for our slim PHP application. For that, I am gonna create a new file called docker-compose.yaml inside the project directory. This file is going to contain the recipe for our server stack. I am not going to waste time writing the whole configuration. Instead, I will copy the file from the GitHub repository. So let me go to the repository for this project. Then go to the repositories tab and then slim php app. Here you can find the docker compose.yaml file. Let me copy it to the clipboard. Then paste it here. Let's have a quick look at what this file contains. I have defined three services or containers, web, PHP and MySQL. The web container will run the Nginx server. It's the default image provided by Docker Hub. 
and its HTTP port is mapped to the port 8888 on the host machine. The host machine is the desktop I am currently using. We are also creating a custom nginx configuration file. We also want to mount the app folder so that the container can access the files inside it. The second one is the PSP container. Instead of using the default PSP image available at Docker Hub, we want to customize it using a Docker file. The PSP container also needs access to the app folder, so we are mounting it. Also, the container should run the PSP process as the same user on the host machine, so as to avoid permission issues. In this case, the username is Abhinav. I am deleting it since we can define the same inside the docker file. The third one is the MySQL container which runs MariaDB server. We are also setting a database by the name slimphp along with user password and root password. The database will be automatically created when the container starts. Also the data will be stored in a docker volume. Also note that I have mapped the port 3325 of the host machine to the port 3306 of the container. I am using a different port number because the default port number 3306 is already in use by some other application. The name of the volume is Slim PHP. Ok, now let's create the nginx configuration file. Create a new file called nginx.conf. Once again I am going to copy the file from the github repository. Ok, this file defines the server block for our application. A server block is equivalent to a virtual host in an Apache server. It tells Nginx to listen on port 80 and server root is the public folder in our application. Followed by that we are setting the order of the index files. Here is the index.php file. Below that we are setting the server name or the domain name for the application slimphp.local. Then we have two location blocks. The first one redirects all the requests to the index.php file and the second one passes all the PHP file requests to the PHP container. That's what this fast CGI pass directive does. Next we want to create the PHP docker file. php.docker file. Again let's copy the code from the github repo. Ok. This is a list of commands to execute when creating the container. Starting off from the PHP FPM image, we will install a few PHP extensions. Then we will configure the GD library. By the way, I got this code from the official WordPress Docker image. WordPress is also built using PHP, so I hope this code is sufficient to run most PHP applications. On the next few lines, we are configuring the op cache. Followed by that, we are installing xdebug and imagic. The next two lines create a new user by the name Abhinav and switch to that user. Running the who am I command on the host machine reveals the username. Using the same username on the container ensures that we don't encounter any permission issues. And the last line executes PHP when the container starts. Ok, the docker compose file is now complete, next we want to build it. For that let me go to the terminal and cd to the project directory. Then run the command docker compose build which builds the necessary docker images based on our compose file. The build process can take a couple of minutes depending on your network speed and system performance. Once the images are successfully built, we can run the docker compose app-d to start the containers. Ok, all the containers are now started. We want to do one more thing before we can access our application. We want to edit the hosts file to add the domain name. Add the loopback IP address followed by the server name that is slimphp.local. Now we are ready to access our application from port 8888. Let me open a browser window and go to the address http 
slim php dot local colon double eight double eight and here it is we can see the message welcome to our cricket players api however the output is in plain text format we can verify that by going to the network tab below the header section we can see that the content type is text html instead we want that to be in json format I can do that by calling the with header method on our response object. Response with header. The first argument is content type and the second argument is application slash JSON. Reload the browser window and this time we can see that the output is in JSON format. Firefox is already displaying it formatted. The header section also shows the same. However, since we are building an API, we want to carry out POST, PUT and DELETE requests as well, in addition to GET requests. A browser is not that useful when it comes to these other request types. So we want to install another program called POSTMAN. On Ubuntu, you can install it using the SNAP package manager. sudo snap search POSTMAN And here is the application we want to install. Install it by running the command sudo snap install postman. Ok, postman is now installed. Now let me open it. You can also optionally create a free postman account which allows you to save your requests and sync them between multiple devices. I already have an account so let me sign into that. Ok, this is how it looks. Let me increase the font size and zoom in the interface slightly so that you can view it better. Go to settings, editor settings and increasing the font size to 14. Then pressing ctrl plus to zoom in a bit. Now let's start. Click create new then select the HTTP request option. Enter the URL of our application that is slimphp.local colon double h double h. The default request method is get so no need to change that. Then click send. We can see the response below in JSON format. You also have the option to switch between pretty, preview and visualize. You can also save the request into a collection. I am gonna create a new collection called cricket players API. Then naming this request as home and save. The saved request will appear under the collections tab. Likewise, we can save any number of requests and reuse them later, which is quite time saving. Let's go back to the code editor and add the remaining routes. Before that, let's move the routes to a separate file in order to better organize our code base. So I am creating a new folder called routes and inside that I am creating two new files api.php and web.php. The api.php file is where we put all our API routes. And the web.php file is where we can put all the web routes in case we want to add a web application later on. But currently we are only building the API. Let me cut the route portion from index.php and put it inside api.php. In addition to the home route we want to create 5 more routes. The second one to get the list of all players. The third one to get a single player. The fourth one to add a new player. The fifth one to update a player. And the last one to delete a player. Before proceeding we want some sample data to work with. right? So we want to connect to the database and add some player details. Instead of using the traditional PHP my admin, I am going to use another application called dbeaver ce. It's a universal database management tool that can work with a wide variety of database engines including MariaDB, MySQL, PostgreSQL and so on. Looking at the downloads page, we can see that dbeaver community edition can be installed using the snap package manager. Installation files are also available for windows and mac os. Snap search dbeaver-ce and here it is. Now install it sudo snap install dbeaver-ce. 
The installation is complete. Now let me launch dBeaver. Then go to database, new database connection to create a new connection. I am selecting MariaDB as the database driver. On the next page we can enter the connection settings. The server host is localhost and port is 3325. The database name is slimphp, username abhinav, password password. Click test connection and the connection is successful. Now click finish. And it appears on the left side under database navigator. Click on the database name then on the right side under tables. Right click and go to create new table. We are going to create a new table called players. The players table is going to contain four columns ID, name, team and category. ID is an auto incrementing integer while the other three columns are strings. So I am setting the data type to varchar and size as 255. We also want to set the ID column as the primary key. We can do that from the constraints section. Finally click save on the bottom right corner. You can also see the equivalent SQL code we are going to execute. Click persist to save. Once it's saved go to the data tab to add some sample rows. Click the add new row button at the bottom. Let the first one be Sachin Tendulkar, Team India and Category Batsman. Here I am just adding the details of a few players I remember. Later I will also show you how you can add new players using the API. Okay, I have added 5 rows. Now I can save the changes to the database. Now let me go back to the editor and continue coding. Let's add the route to get all the players. App get players is the URL path and the second argument is the callback function. Function request request response response. By the way, I had forgotten to import the request and response interfaces when we created the new file api.php use psr http message server request interface as request similarly import the response interface also okay now inside the route callback function we want to connect to the database to get the list of players instead of writing sql commands from scratch let's use a database abstraction layer I am gonna use the doctrine database abstraction layer. Looking at the doctrine documentation we can see that the package can be installed using composer as usual. So open the built-in terminal and run the command composer require doctrine slash dbal. The package is installed and we can see it inside the vendor directory. It will also be added to the composer.json file. Performing the database connection inside the callback function is not a good way. Instead we can move that into separate class. So I am gonna create a new folder called src and inside that create two new files db.php and config.php. We can use the config.php file to store all the settings related things including the database settings. Here I am defining the class config which contains two private properties db settings and error settings. We will discuss the error settings later in this video. Now let's set up the db settings. Next define the constructor function and inside that assign the values for the db settings property. Let it be an array which contains 5 items db name, slimbsp, user, abhinav, 
password password host mysql and driver pdo mysql then let's define another method called get db config which just returns the db settings property okay that's our config class next let's move on to the database class this is where we want the doctrine database abstraction layer we want to import the driver manager class to perform the database connection okay now let's define the class db which has three properties the query builder connection and connection parameters now let's perform the connection inside the class constructor for that the constructor requires the config class as a dependency instead of creating a new config class instance inside the constructor method we can add it as a parameter this is known as dependency injection in this case it means the class db depends on the class config the next line calls the get db config method from class config and assign its return value to the connection params property followed by that we will call the get connection method from the driver manager class and store it into the connection property note that the get connection method is a static method which can be called using the scope resolution operator now we can get the query builder by calling the create query builder method let's also define another method to return the query builder public function get query builder return this qb but still our slim application does not know about the existence of these two classes config and db even if we include them as usual and try to use them inside our routes it's not going to work for instance inside our api.php file i am requiring both the files config.php and db.php then down below within our players route if i try to create new instances for both the classes it's not going to work also the code will look ugly if you try to do it like that so a better solution is to use dependency injection containers so that the required classes will be available inside our route callback functions we are going to use the php di package for that again we can install the package using composer open the terminal and run the command composer require php di slash php di some error occurred so let me run it once again after adding the with all dependencies option okay the package is installed the php di package allows us to set the dependencies explicitly using a format called definitions then these definitions can be put into a container to make it accessible from everywhere so let me create a new file called definitions.php inside our src directory the classes config and db are the dependencies for our application so let's require both of them then we want to import the di create function use function di slash create finally return an array with two items config and db the create function will create instances for the classes when required that's how it works now back in the index.php file we want to set up the container in our case we want to build the container from the definitions so we want to import the container builder then after the autoload.php line create an instance of the container builder container builder equals new container builder then call the add definitions method and pass the path to our definitions.php file then get the container by calling the build method 
Now we want to let our Slim app know about the container. Slim has built-in support for dependency injection containers, so we can call the setContainer method and pass the container instance. By the way, don't get confused by all these fancy terms, dependency, dependency injection, containers, etc. A dependency is just a class that another class depends on. Dependency injection means providing the class instance as a parameter instead of creating it inside the constructor method. But still we need to handle the injections manually by creating the required instances in our application. That's where the dependency injection container is helpful. So the container is another class instance that knows about all the dependencies via configurations and manages the injection automatically. I hope the idea is somewhat clear. Now let me require the route files api.php and web.php. Since the container is configured, we can access the db class instance inside our route by using this keyword, this get db get query builder. We wanna get all the players so the statement becomes query builder select id name team category from players. Query builder will automatically convert it into valid SQL statements. We can get the results by calling the execute query method followed by the fetch all method to return it as an array. Then we have to JSON encode the results and write it into the response body. Set the content type to application JSON and return the response. Back on Postman, enter the URL, click send and we got the result. So our API is taking shape. Next we can add the remaining routes. Before that, let me save this request to our collection. Request name is get all players and then save it. Okay. The next one is the route to get a single player based on the player ID. So app get the URL is player slash ID. Here note that the ID is a URL parameter. So put it inside curly brackets. Then comes the callback function with three parameters request, response and arguments. The last one arguments is an array which contains the URL parameters. Again we need the query builder. So let me copy it from above. Okay. Now the query is query builder select id name team category from players where id equals placeholder here we are using php prepared statements and the question mark denotes a positional placeholder on the next line we can bind the value to the placeholder using the set parameter method set parameter Position is represented using numbered index, in this case 1, comma, arts of id. I hope you already know the importance of using prepared statements. It helps preventing SQL injection attacks. Now we can get the results. Variable results equals query builder execute query fetch associative. Then response get body write json encode results. Now we can return the response. Return response with header content type application JSON. Okay. There is a typo here. I forgot to put the arrow. Okay. Back in Postman, let's create a new get request. Let me try to get the player with the ID 2. So player slash 2. Click send and we got the result. Brain Lara, West Indies, Batsman. Let's try ID 4. And this time we got Lesit Malinga Sri Lanka fast bowler. Let's try a few more. Okay, it's working. 
on the other hand if we enter a non existent player id the result will be boolean false the next route is to add a new player which means we want to pass the data along with the request and insert it into the database so we need to use a post request for that the route url is player slash add also we want to access the request data within the route callback function but we cannot use the post super global variable because it's not a form submission so we need to parse the incoming json request body to get the input data let's do that in a middleware so that the middleware can be reused by other routes as well let me create a new folder called middlewares and inside that create a new file called json body parser.php then the slim php documentation has a clear explanation on everything the request passes through all the connected middlewares before reaching the application route similarly the response will also pass through all the middlewares after leaving the route function so as the name suggests middleware is a piece of code that stands in between you can use it to manipulate the request and response objects the json body parser is also a middleware that processes the request object to extract the input data again let's import the request and response interfaces in addition to that middleware also requires the request handler interface it handles a request and returns a response then let me define a variable called json body parser and assign its value to a function that handles the request first of all we need to get the content type from the request headers using the get header line method request get header line content type in fact this code is given in the slim documentation itself so i am not reinventing it you can find it under the request body section okay the incoming data that is the player's data should be in json format so we need to check whether the content type of the request is application json if it's true we can access all the raw data from php input with the help of file get contents function here note that php input contains all the data that comes after the request headers if there aren't any json errors we can add the contents to the request body using the with parse body method request equals request with parsed body then pass the contents finally handle the request and return a response return handler handle request back in the api.php file we can attach the middleware to the route by chaining the add method add variable json body parser also don't forget to include the middleware file at the top require once current directory followed by the path to the middleware file middlewares slash json body parser dot php from now on all the requests to the route will go through the middleware function before reaching the route callback function so we have access to the input data inside the callback function now we can call the get parsed body method upon the request object to get the request body then as usual we need the query builder object to build the sql query then create the insert operation query builder insert players set value name followed by the placeholder again set value team placeholder set value category placeholder then bind the value to each of the placeholders the required values are available in the parsed body array set parameter 1 comma parsed body of name 
let me copy the same for the team and category as well placeholders 1 2 and 3 corresponding to name team and category now let's execute the query the execute query method will also work but since it's an insertion operation there is no data to be returned so we can use the execute statement method instead the results variable will be either true or false. Back to Postman, let me save the previous request. Then create a new request. This time set the request method to post. Then enter the route URL, player slash add. Next, we want to add the details of the new player into the request body. So go to the body tab, set the format as row and then select JSON. Now let me type in the JSON data for the new player. Name, let it be Virat Kohli. Team, India. And category, Batsman. Okay, that's our new player. Click send and the response shows the number 1 which means the data is successfully inserted into the database. Refresh dbweaver and we can see the newly inserted row. Let me try it one more time with another player. Going back to postman, changing the name to Kevin Peterson, team England. Then click send. Refresh the database. Ok, so it's working. The next route is for updating the details of a particular player. Update operations should use the put request method. We want to identify the player by the ID. So the URL is player slash ID. ID is a URL parameter. Again the callback function receives the request response and the arguments array. Just like the previous route, the data should be sent as part of the request body. So we want the JSON body parts or middleware here as well. Now let's build the query, query builder, update players. Then set the player name, team and category using positional placeholders where the ID equals the ID passed via the URL parameter. Then bind the values to the placeholders. Now variable result equals query builder execute statement. Then return the response along with the result. Okay, suppose I want to modify the second player who is Brian Lara. Go to postman, then let me save the previous request. Okay, then create a new put request. The URL is player slash 2 then coming to the request body part I can enter the new data for the player I want to update here I am gonna change the name from brain Lara to brain Charles Lara I am adding the middle name then let me change the team from West Indies to just Windies no change for category batsman Let me save the request before sending it. Request name is update a player. Ok. Now click send. However, some error occurred on line 107. Let me figure it out. Ok, the problem was that I forgot to add the middleware. Now click send again and this time it worked. Go to dbweaver, refresh the page and we can see that the data has been updated. The final route in our application is for deleting a single player based on the player id. It's quite simple. Just define a delete request. Once again get the query builder. Then build the query, delete players, 
where id equals placeholder and then set the parameter to array args of id okay execute the statement and return the response suppose i want to delete the last player in our database kevin peterson so going to postman create a new request set type to delete the url is player slash 7 there is no other request data so just click send back in dbweaver we can see that the player has been removed with that our route definitions are almost complete also save the last request in postman delete a player okay okay the next topic we are gonna discuss is authentication anyone can view the player details but only authenticated users should be able to modify the data so we want to put an authentication layer before the post put and delete requests authentication is also a good candidate for adding a new middleware so that we can reuse the code whenever we want to add authentication to a particular route so back in the code editor create a new file called authentication.php inside the middlewares directory as usual let's import the required interfaces i'm gonna implement a password based authentication for that to work i want the data stored somewhere in the database so using dbweaver i am gonna create a new table called users the users table has three columns id api key and username api key works the same way as passwords the difference is that users don't have to type the api key into an html form and submit it instead api keys are usually sent with request headers the data type for the id column is integer while the other two are var cares. Okay, then set the ID column as the primary key. Persist the changes to the database, then go to the data tab. Here I want to add a sample user so that I can test the API. For the API key, let me generate a random string online which contains numbers, uppercase letters and lowercase letters. Here is the API key. For now, I am gonna save it in my text editor. Storing passwords and API keys in plain text in the database is not a good idea. Instead, we want to store its hashed value to improve security. So let me generate the password hash online. This is how it looks, copy to clipboard and then paste it in the database field. Save it, then go back to the code editor. Now let's define the function to authenticate a request. The username and API key should be passed as request headers x API user and x API key. So first, let's check whether those headers exist or not. If any one of those is absent, we can send an error response which says specify a username and API key for authentication. Let's put that into a separate function called send error response so that we can reuse it. The function send error response is quite simple. It receives the error message as an array then initiates an empty response object and writes the error string into the response body. We can also set the status code to 401 which means unauthorized. 
else if the api key and username are present we can proceed to validate it get the api key from the database for the requested user again we can use the query builder to perform the database query If the result fetched from the database is false, authentication fails. Most likely the requested username does not exist in the database. So again we can send an error response saying the username does not exist. If that's also okay and the fetched result contains the API key, we have got the hashed API key from the database else return an error response next we can use the built in php function password verify to check whether the hashes match if not send the error response saying invalid api key otherwise if all the above checks are passed the authentication is successful so we can handle the request and return the response which then goes to the appropriate route callback function coming back to the api.php file require the authentication file at the top then scroll down to the bottom and add the middleware to the three routes post put and delete Now let's test the authentication, go to postman and try to add a new player as before. And let the new player be Daniel Vettori from New Zealand. Category Spin Bowler. Click send and we got the message from our application saying specify a username and API key for authentication which means our authentication system is working as expected. So next we want to add the username and API key as request headers. So switch to the headers tab and add them. First let me reveal the hidden headers. Then at the bottom add x API user. The value is Abhinav. The next one is x API key and the value Copy it from the text editor and paste it. Okay. Now click send. But we got an error. On line 44. Oh, the variable A should be in lower case. That was the error. Now click send again. This time there aren't any errors. Refresh the players table and here is the new player. Let's test it once again with the route to delete a player. I am adding the request headers but setting the API key to a wrong value. Note that I am removing the last character from the API key and click send. And the error response says invalid API key. So our authentication checks are working as expected. Also note that the error status code is 401 unauthorized. One thing I forgot, we want to set the error response type to JSON. In our send error response function with header content type application json okay that's it now let's enter the correct api key and test again and the player is successfully removed okay everything looks good until now we are able to read add update and delete players using our api but what if somebody sends the wrong data when adding or updating a player? 
our application breaks which should not happen if you take a look at what we have done so far you can notice that the requested data as well as our application code contains exactly the name team and category fields which corresponds to the name team and category columns in our database suppose i knowingly or unknowingly submit the data in a wrong format for instance instead of name i am going to set it as full name instead of team country and instead of category type now if i send this data to our application the application will fail the error says undefined key name and so on if we check the database we can see that a new row has been added with null values so in short the wrong data has broken our application as well as the data the solution to prevent this issue is to implement some form of data validation or in other words we have to ensure that the incoming data is in the expected format otherwise the application should send a proper error message instead of breaking searching on the web for a while i came across this php package called php json schema which allows you to validate data against a predefined schema schema is nothing but a json string which defines the structure of the data as always we can install the package using composer Next I am going to create another middleware called data validation.php then import the json schema validator class Inside the validation function we want to define the json schema string let's use the now doc syntax to define that string set the data type to object which tells that the incoming data should be a valid json string other data types like boolean array number string etc are also supported then we want to define the properties that should be present in the data in our case name team and category the data type is string for all the three properties below that we can define the required fields or properties we want all of them to be present in our data so enter name team and category as an array then convert the json schema string to a php object using the json decode function in order to validate the data we want to access the incoming request data so let me copy the code from our json body parser middleware and put it here then create an instance of the class validator get the request data using the get parsed body method the parsed data will be an array so we can use the json encode and then the json decode functions to convert it into a string and then do a php object then we can call the validate method and pass the two objects then check whether the validation is successful using the is valid method if it's okay we can handle the request and pass it forward to the application route else if the validation is false we can send an error response use the get errors method of the validator class to get the list of errors one more thing in case the request data is incorrect we can set the status code to 400 which means bad request coming back to the api.php file require the new middleware file now we can add the middleware to both the routes the route to add a new player 
and the route to update a player. Going to Postman, if I try to add a new player without the category property included, we will get an error which says the property category is required. If I check the database, the data has not been inserted, which means our validation middleware has successfully prevented the incorrect data from entering our application. Let's test another case. This time I'm going to set the category to a number instead of a string. And we got the error message which says integer value found but a string is required. And on top of that if I remove the team field and click send then we will get two errors. The first one says that the property team is required and the second one is regarding the wrong data type for the category property. So that's how the validation works. Now if I submit the data in the correct format, then it will work. The next topic I want to discuss is error handling. Suppose I send a request to a non-existent URL. You can see that our application throws a fatal error. To prevent that we have to add the error middleware but before that the documentation also suggests us to add the routing middleware. To be honest I don't know what exactly it does since all the routes were already working without it. Ok before adding the error middleware let's go to the config class once again to define the error settings. We want to define three boolean values, display error details log errors and log error details. We are setting the display error details value to true because it's a development environment and we want to get a detailed breakdown of all the errors that occur in order to make debugging easier. On the other hand if it was a production application make sure to set this value to false. Now let's define another method called get error settings which just returns the error settings property. Coming back to the index.php file, get the error settings by calling the get error settings method we have just defined. Then add the middleware to the app variable by calling the add error middleware method and pass the three values. Ok that's it, now if I try to access the non-existent URL, the application throws a proper 404 not found error. We can also see the details and trace of the error occurred. One more point I want to discuss in this video is regarding the storage of our database credentials. Here you can see that I saved the database details in our code itself inside the config class definition. However, from a security point of view, it may not be a good practice to store the passwords or usernames in the code. Especially if you want to commit the code to a public repository, it can get leaked. So a better way is to store such details in a .env file it's a standard practice to store all the environment variables in a .env file. We can create the .env file in our app directory and put all the database details in that. But how can our application read the contents inside that file? And for that purpose, we can use Symfony's .env component. Currently, Symfony is in version 6.1 and you can see the documentation on GitHub. So let me install the package using Composer. Composer require Symfony slash .env. Then go to the index.php file and import the required class and namespace. 
യൂസ് സിംഫണി സ്ലാഷ് കോമ്പണൻറ്റ് സ്ലാഷ് ഡോട്ട് ഇ എൻ വി സ്ലാഷ് ഡോട്ട് ഇ എൻ വി ബിലോ ദാറ്റ് ക്രിയേറ്റ് ആൻ ഇൻസ്റ്റൻസ് ഓഫ് ദ ക്ലാസ് ഡോട്ട് ഇ എൻ വി ദൻ ലോഡ് ദ ഡോട്ട് ഇ എൻ വി ഫയൽ വാട്ട് ഇറ്റ് ഡസ് ഈസ് ഇറ്റ് മേക്സ് ദ വെരിബിൾസ് ഇൻ ദ ഫയൽ അവൈലബിൾ ഇൻ അവർ ആപ്ലിക്കേഷൻ വയ ദ എൻവയൺമെൻറ്റ് സൂപ്പർ ഗ്ലോബൽ വേരിയബിൾസ് so we can replace the hard coded details with the corresponding environment variables in our config class constructor okay let me just verify that it's working all right also if you are using git for version control you can add the file to the dot git ignore file to make sure it does not get committed to the repository okay that's our application but once i finished recording the video i figured out a few more things so i think i want to mention those as well the first point is regarding the add routing middleware method called earlier i had told you that i have no idea what it is but after searching the web for a while i came across this conversation on github and according to that slim now treats routing as a middleware which means a built in middleware in addition to the custom middlewares you define in your application code and the add routing middleware method gives you the capability to determine the order of execution of these middlewares which means now you have the ability to place your custom middlewares before or after routing however the application will still work fine even if you omit the method call because slim will automatically resort to calling the built in static method invoke as a last resort the second point is regarding the built in add body parsing middleware which means there is no need to define custom body parsing middleware as we did here so instead of writing all this custom code we can just call it directly so here i am going to the index.php file again if we check the documentation here it says put the body parsing middleware before the call to add error middleware so the stack looks like this it comes before the add routing middleware so the correct place to add the line is here okay now go to the api.php file and we can remove all the add json body parser lines attached to the route callback functions there is no need for this line delete this as well okay there were only two in addition to that we had repeated the same code here as well inside the data validation.php middleware where is it here it is we can remove that as well so in effect the built in body parser middleware helps us to avoid repeating the same code i want to go to one of the routes where we use the body parser the route to add a new player and if i click the send button you can see that it's working also since we added the body parser middleware directly to the app variable the parsed request body will be available to all the routes and the third point is regarding the order of execution of middlewares i don't remember if i had mentioned it or not so for instance if we again take the example of this route the route to add a new player you can see that i have added two middlewares to this particular route first the data validation middleware followed by the authentication middleware and the last added middleware gets executed first that's how it goes so first the request goes through the authentication middleware followed by the data validation middleware to show you the effect i will go to postman going to the add a new player route and now let me modify the data in such a way that the first middleware that is the data validation middleware fails also i will go to the headers section and enter the wrong api key 
so that our authentication middleware also fails. Now if I click send, you can see that the message is invalid API key. That means the authentication middleware got executed. But if I reverse the order, that means if I put the authentication middleware before the data validation middleware and now if I click send, you can see the other one. That means this time the data validation middleware gets executed first. And the final point I want to mention is regarding the error middleware. Here you can see that we had set all the three values display error details, log errors as well as log error details to true within the config.php file. So if I go to postman and open the for not for error page and click send, we will get the for not for status code along with the complete details on what has gone wrong. You can see the error details as well as the error trace. However, on a production application, you don't want your end users to find out what has gone wrong behind the scenes. So in that case, you might want to set the display error details value to false. Now if I go to the page again and reload it, this time we got just the error status for not for but without any additional information. Okay, that's all for this video. I hope you learned something useful today. Thanks for watching.